$411,000 per unit. Somebody's getting paid, paid today. Can to you state council. your name for the record? Oh, just, I'm Omari El Kadar. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I looked over the agreement that's in this $21 million of ARPA funds that's being given to the Housing Authority for a project that existed before the pandemic. I don't know why they would need the bailing out of ARPA funds, but um, I think that you should remove the term one for one replacement from that agreement entirely. As a housing organizer, I think it's a disgusting co-opting of our message. When we say one for one replacement, we mean that the development results in units that have the same affordability as they did prior. That means that if your income determines you can only afford a $400 a month room, bedroom, or I'm sorry, apartment, then there will be a place for you in Richmond. We don't mean that the development results in units that are simply called, quote, affordable. We don't mean low-income housing tax credit properties, which are not as stable nor as affordable. As you may not know, there's $1,300 a month, two bedrooms in Manchester that are using uh, low-income housing tax credit properties. Um, the agreement doesn't even require that any of these units, units be affordable to extremely low income, although it caps the amount that can exist there, but it doesn't say that any uh, extremely low income people uh, have to be accepted there, and which is the benefit of traditional public housing. We mean that when a two bedroom is torn down with one for one replacement, we get a two bedroom replacement. When a three bedroom unit is demolished, we get a three bedroom unit. Not like the plans where we see for Mosby Court right now, where it'll result in a third of the units being for one bedrooms. I guess it's for the college students and the you know, MCV doctors across the bridge or something. Um, we don't mean those types of things. You know, it almost seems like capitalism is targeting black families for expulsion from the city, but surely this body wouldn't be supporting anything like that. I also think that moving forward, any reference to the Creighton Court Tenant Bill of Rights should be removed from the agreement and any further discussion. Legal Aid Justice Center introduced this idea to Richmond after their successful efforts in Charlottesville with their Tenant Bill of Rights. But you know what they didn't have is you the have Charlottesville seconds. Housing Authority's lawyer draft a document and then meet with a single tenant leader in private without the tenant group's lawyer present and then collaborate with the mayor and the president of city council to sign the document. That wasn't what happened in Charlottesville when they uh, introduced a tenant bill of rights. That's what happened here. Um, so I think that that's another disgusting co-opting of the social justice community's message, another disgusting co-opting of the housing justice community's message. I think that, you know, and the community benefits there are that what? That personnel hired will come from the union. That's the only community benefits agree in that whole thing. Thank that you, the, Mr. al -Gaddafi. The employees that's your time. come from the union. Thank you. Which community negotiated these benefits? 